more blue suits coming in this morning than I've seen in your life. If anyone doesn't know them, this is Peter LaSalle, executive producer of what used to be called Something with David Letterman, and Rob Morton on my right. This, of course, is our chief executive officer and, and everything else. And this, he's famous. It's, um, and somewhere in, the, somewhere in the room is the uh, vice president of late night, Rod Perth, I believe. You can wave, there's Rod Perth. And somewhere out in the hinterland at the other end of cameras is our distinguished president of entertainment, Jeff Sagansky. Jeff Sagansky. Sure. Um, so, Thank you um, very much. Now, what happened if we have to move? And before I introduce David Letterman and Larry Tisch, I also, at this time, would like to thank Michael Ovitz, Lee Gabler, and, and CAA for uh, a negotiation of matchless skill and great integrity. Four or five years ago, the beat was too long. It won't make the cut. <laughs> five, four or five years ago, when Larry charged us with making the network number one in prime time, we had a lot of goals. And one of them was to get the morning news back on track. First of all, get the morning news back and then get that up. But the most elusive goal was, was late night television. It has been for CBS for decades. It's the empty piece in a jigsaw puzzle that's glared at us over the decades. And there seemed, from two years ago, three years ago, clear to me that there was only one person to fill it. The other day I was asked, I, I, I suggested that David Letterman was in the great beyond the fringe, Monty Python Saturday Night Live tradition, and, and Dudley Moore was being interviewed, and he was asked if he agreed with that. And I was put in the spot because they said, Howard Stringer says, says that David is in the great tradition, and Dudley Moore thought for a few moments, and he said, absolutely, he said, I, I love to watch that show. He's smart, he's sophisticated, he's quick, he'd fit in. And for years, um, I thought the same thing. It's a show I watched with great regularity, and it seemed to me that it, it was a, he would be a signature for this network, the likes of which we haven't seen in years, for all those reasons. Because he's smart, because he's thoughtful, because he's original, because he's daring, and he's fun and he's gonna get his own back on anything I say about him. So it's a great moment for CBS, if excuse the expression, a red letterman day. Oh, whoa. 
my last shot of the day. <laughs> a great moment for CBS and a great moment for all of us, Jeff and Larry and Torrisi, all those that work for this. But before I get David up here to, to have fun at my expense and Larry's expense and your expense, um, it was also worth remembering that a long time ago, Mr. Paley put up the cash for Jack Benny at a big turning point in this network. And Larry Tish has just done the same thing with considerable enthusiasm and total resolution to bring David Letterman to this network and turn another facet of its history into something special. So I'd first like to call on Larry Tish to say a few words. And I'm going to see this chair. <laughs> Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, we are truly delighted to welcome this great star to the CBS network. And in doing that, I want to compliment Howard Stringer and his staff for making it all possible. They had the vision. They are truly carrying out CBS's long-term strategy of being number one in everyday part. We've made it in prime time. We've made it number one in daytime with David Letterman, we think we will be number one in late night. In fact, we're pretty sure of that. And I just want to tell you, David, how delighted we are to have you part of the CBS family. Thank you, Thank you very much. <coughs> David, it's my turn to be in your chair. All right. <laughs> First of all, thanks to uh, Mr. Tish, and uh, thank you very much to Howard and, and uh, Thanks to you folks for that stirring ovation. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry to hear about Knott's Landing. Uh, I never dated Amy Fisher. I fixed her car. I helped her with her homework. I never laid a hand on Amy Fisher. <laughs> As some of you may know, uh, for the last year and a half, uh, I've, I've kind of been interested in uh, doing a show a little earlier than the one I'm doing now. And uh, that reality has come to pass uh, here today. And I'm, I'm happy because of that reason but what really makes me ultimately very happy and very satisfied is the fact that I, I get to come here and, and do it at, at CBS. And I just want to, at this point, thank these people for certainly their patience. Uh, I mean, could it have dragged on a little longer? Uh, and, and I want to thank them for their support. And uh, also, uh, I would like to thank them for their generosity, because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this deal certainly would have put a smile on Jack Benny's face, even in, in the condition he's in now. He would have <laughs> found reason to celebrate this. Uh, I, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll take some questions, we'll take some... Uh, discussion on this and then when we're finished uh, Colin Powell will come out and update you on the bombing so <laughs> uh, whoever yes ma'am I didn't say cheap enough ma'am and, and I resent being misquoted right off the top here I, <laughs> could, could I see some credentials by the way <laughs> Say, say part of that again, will you? <laughs> I mean, just, just, there's just one little phrase I'd like to hear again. Uh, no, we're, we are considering uh, the possibility of uh, moving the show. Uh, we have not decided, and one of the factors is we would obviously, I, I think we would like to stay in New York because we're familiar with New York City. The one thing that would cinch the deal probably is if we can come up with reasonable hourly parking rates. <laughs> then we're here. <laughs> By the way, thanks again for that stirring ovation. <laughs> and could we get a little more carpet for this room, please? <laughs> 
Yes, sir. How much of the Letterman staff will be coming over to CBS for Schaefer, the writers? You're looking at it. <laughs> uh, as far as we know, we would like everybody who can come with us to, to please uh, make the transition. We, we feel like uh, we're, we're very comfortable with the people. They've, they've proven themselves to be uh, great at what they do. And uh, so we're hopeful uh, and optimistic that, that everybody who wants to can, can make the move with us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I want to also thank NBC for their patience in this because I'm thinking if it were me, I would have uh, uh, certainly gotten fed up w with this situation a long, long time ago. And, and we had to do a, a show for those people uh, each and every night as, as all of this happened. And, and I think that uh, they certainly behaved honorably uh, and as gentlemen. And I, I do have... Uh, uh, nothing but uh, uh, great thoughts about my 11 years uh, at NBC. And I'll tell you right now, what I will miss most would be the, uh, if I think about my years at NBC, what I'll miss most, uh, I guess the, the back rubs from Irving R. Levine. And, <laughs> but <laughs> the man is a master, yet there's a certain gentleness to him that I find incomparable. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, I, uh, no, I was not, uh, strictly speaking, negotiating with Jay. So we, we are still uh, maintain a relationship much as we've had uh, since I first met him years and years ago in California. So how do you feel about going up against him? Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy about the opportunity. I, uh, first of all, I wanted to do a show at 11.30, and, um, uh, you know, obviously there's competition in the picture now, and, and uh, we feel that... You know, we, we've done this a little bit. It's, it's not like we just uh, got off a bus. Well, some came on a bus. Uh, so we're, we feel like this is good for us. We're eager, and, and I, I think honestly that uh, we should not have too much difficulty being competitive. I mean, I mean we've been doing it uh, for 11 years. And let me, let me promise you one thing right now. Oh, I like that. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you one thing. Um, this, this show, we're going to, when we go on the air uh, here at uh, uh, CBS, and by the way, uh, we'll go on the air just as soon as my plastic surgery heals, but when we do, the show will really be much better than we used to do. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, uh, it was a contractual issue, and we said, sure. We'll, all right, we'll, we'll let you have that one. It'll be a much better show. It'll be a much better show. Okay. Fine. I'm sorry? Uh, you know, I'm not certain. Is, do we have a... Sometime in August. When, when can you make it, ma'am? <laughs> in August, sometime. In August, we believe. Oh, come up here and let's settle this now. I don't, I don't have to take this. Um, I, I'm not sure how to respond to the question. I, you know, with regard to uh, bitterness, I've, I've never considered myself to be a bitter person. Uh, I, I, uh, when Johnny Carson retired and uh, I was not given the job as host of The Tonight Show, I was disappointed, but it, to my way of thinking, it, it was not bitter. Uh, and, and, but, you know, there are many, many other things to, to make fun of uh, in this world, like, you know, beginning with your tie, for example. But, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry, do they make the best what? Do you think General Electric makes the best management of a television network? <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but have you tried their toaster ovens? <laughs> They're not a bad product. Yes, sir. There was a uh, negotiation. Uh, I believe there was a 30-day period. Uh, I was never quite clear on a lot of this. Uh, I, j I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, and I believe there, there was negotiation right up until pretty much the, the last possible contractual moment. And uh, I think the issues discussed uh, are of extreme confidence, and, and I can't really get into that. Y yes, sir. Hi. Right, uh, some of the industry sources in Hollywood are, are being quoted as saying it's only how you would have stayed at NBC if the network had gotten rid of the uh, <laughs> 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 if the network had gotten rid of Warren Littlefield?
No, no, <laughs> no. We, uh, you know, Warren and I, uh, um, you know, I've known Warren for a, a long time, but I, what, what's the point of why, why would you want somebody out of a job, for heaven's sakes? You know? Uh, no, that, that's, uh, that's silly. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. Right there. You, sir. Yeah, there were a lot of your viewers who were concerned that it changed the CBS, but it's going to be a change in format. Can you tell us if going to be a change in format with the show? We, is there something wrong with the present format, sir? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you know, I've, I've heard, I've had a lot of the people say to me, uh, not only are you changing time periods, you're moving from 12.30, 12.35, to uh, 11.30, and, and you're moving from NBC to, uh, to CBS. Will, will this be a problem? And, and this suggests, it's kind of insulting, it suggests that people who watch my show don't understand the complexities of the remote control. Uh, so I, I don't think that's going to be, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, co-anchoring the evening news with uh, Dan Rather, so I, I, don't, I don't find it as that stretch uh, of the imagination too, too drastic. I, I think I'm officially finished at uh, NBC June 25th. Yes, yes. We believe uh, in uh, in August. <clears throat> we believe in August, yeah, and we should probably finish up around Labor Day. No. <laughs> 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 I just, I just said joke, Larry. Relax, will you? Come on. But it, let me remind you one thing: the, the sooner we finish up, the sooner we get snacks. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, we'll see. <laughs> he, he's got a lot to shoot for there. <laughs> we, we both have our work cut out for us there. I, I, I only, I, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I feel like uh, as I leave NBC, uh, one of the things that uh, is a, a bit saddening uh, for me is that uh, toward the end there, I, I got to know uh, Bob Wright pretty well, and uh, I have a lot of respect for the man. Yes, sir. Um, I, I get enough for gum. It's uh, it's been a very very generous offer. But uh, also, I, I have to say that um, uh, money and uh, financial uh, considerations have never in my life been uh, the prime motivating force. Um, and and I believe in in early discussions there were some people who made offers that I, e even I found silly. Um, this one is uh, really, really something I couldn't be happier about. And, and I hope to reward their confidence and their interest in me and, and the, the product that we turn out for them by uh, never having to go anywhere else again as, as long as we're doing television. Yes, sir. Is NBC planning a big send-off for you and all <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I mean, you're, you know, there are many, many television shows that rely on uh, guests from all walks of life and you the battle is the same whether you're on at uh, 9 in the morning or 11:30 in the evening or 12:30 in the evening so i i don't i don't see much changing there i think i think we've had pretty good luck by the way over the years competing with uh, uh, other shows yes ma'am the 11:30 time slot is obviously really important to you, but if it turns in a lot of markets you will still be on at 12:30 I, I think in the beginning uh, there are some problems regarding uh, complete clearance, uh, but the situation we're in now at NBC has not been uh, exactly ideal for us either. So we, we've dealt with that before. Uh, we're confident it's something that can be overcome, something that can be managed, and it, it comes as no surprise to us. No. Yes, sir. I see you have your sleeves rolled up. I applaud that. You're, you're ready to do some questioning, aren't you? <laughs> You know, uh, when, when I was, as I mentioned before, that's, I think, probably the, uh, the one real disappointment I've had in my professional life. 
uh, and I, I got over it, and, and uh, I'm on to, to bigger and better things now. Um, and I forget the rest of your question. I'm sorry. If there was anything else besides all of those spots that they could have done for you? No, no, no. I, 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 I just felt like at that point I had been on the, at uh, 1230, uh, t 10 years, and uh, I just would have always wanted to, to try it at 1130. So, uh, I, I mean, there was discussion of, of uh, prime time, uh, but I, I would have been really on, you know, you have to be really very good to get on prime time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Jumping on at 10.30 in the Midwest, are you going to keep the late-night title to the show? I think the, the late-night title is actually property of the National Broadcasting Company. So uh, I, I don't know. Um, well, we'll come up with something. We'll try and work the name Buttafuco into the title. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's, there's, your, there's your ratings magic right there. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Ebert, ladies and gentlemen, Roger Ebert in the back. And his friend and uh, partner Gene Siskel, also seated some 12 feet from him. Hey, I got a couple of questions for you guys. What do you think about the theory that for some reason your humor is so gifted that it has to be on later? No, nah, I don't know. You you people seem to be keeping up, so I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure that, that would be. I you know you're on when you're on. When we when we first started at uh, twelve thirty, we had to make almost every choice regarding the content of the program, so it would not look like we're just trying to do a poor imitation of uh, Johnny Carson. Uh, so those were all conscious decisions. And, and I tr truly believe the show is the show, whether it's on at uh, 12.30 or 11.30, there, there may be, uh, I'll tell you one thing, we'd like to be in color, all right? Right off the top of my head. <laughs> what do you think, Larry, color? <laughs> Let's do it. I don't, I don't want to break the bank here, but think about it. Um, but I, I just feel like, you know, things, things work out. I mean, 11.30, yeah, maybe, maybe there'll be some things that we'd like to change, but I, I don't really believe they present themselves until you just g get a feel for it. Okay, that's it. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, as I've said now uh, twice, <laughs> um... I, I was I was disappointed at the time because I, I don't know of a person in in comedy or television who didn't sort of grow up with uh, uh, Johnny Carson as a, as a role model and it was I think it's something everybody it's one of the reasons people leave home and, and come to New York or go to California to get into uh, comedy or show business so that was a disappointment for me uh, on the other hand the situation I find myself in today uh, because of the people I'm coming to work with. I mean, th this happens to be the number one television network in the world. Um, and because of the, as I mentioned before, the patience and the support that I've gotten from these people now, not to mention again, the generosity, uh, I just, you know, somehow I have trouble feeling all that disappointed. <laughs> the 12.30 show, can you talk about that? The one that you're developing? Or that you... At least have a. <laughs> well, do you do you like cooking segments? <laughs> uh, Are you developing a or is that just sort of a blue sky? Thing it, it, it's I don't I wouldn't call it blue sky. I think that uh, it's something we would like to do, but we we would like to uh, get the 11:30 show up and uh, up and running first. But we'll consider you when it comes time for 12:30. <laughs> Aside from late night, what might be the property of NBC? They own uh, the rights to my old ice dancing routine. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's tied up with the Olympics somehow. I don't... We have that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yes, Gene Siskel, ladies and gentlemen. Gene. Yes, Gene. Uh, if we make the move to L.A., what excuse would you use? If we go to L.A.? Yes. Uh, geez, that's an interesting question. How are we doing on time? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I think the, n not the excuse, I think the reason for staying in New York, 
or the reason for going to uh, Los Angeles, and also uh, Muncie, Indiana, oddly enough, is in the running. <laughs> the, the reason will be what seems to be best for the show. So it will, it will actually be a creative choice. <laughs> well, right now I'm leaning just a little bit to my right. <laughs> um, I, you know, we, we've been in New York. I've been in New York uh, for 11 years. I did a, uh, a morning show uh, for NBC. That was also very successful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I just, I, you know, by virtue of the fact that our, our uh, uh, staff and crew uh, live here now and have grown comfortable, I would have to say that for those reasons, we're leaning to staying in New York. On the other hand, the ultimate decision will be what's best for the show. What is, what is the better place to actually uh, do the program. Will the show probably open in New York, though? In other words, can you go on the air? That... You know, we just haven't come to that yet. I'm sorry. What What are you listening to? <laughs> Is it the Knicks? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you spoken with Johnny Carson about this? And what about the woman that breaks into your house up in Connecticut? Oddly enough, she's spoken to Johnny Carson. I can't. <laughs> It's the damnedest thing. I can't seem to get him on the phone. She's got, got his number in her Rolodex. You figure that out. I don't know. Uh, I, yes, I, I have. I spoke to uh, Mr. Carson on Sunday. What did he say? He said, stop calling me. <laughs> <laughs> Alex and I are playing tennis. Stop bothering me. Yes, I, there have been points in my life when I have turned to uh, Johnny Carson for advice. And he's, I, uh, the reason I am standing here, there have been many, many people in my life who have been helpful and supportive and encouraging to me. And I would have to, to think that the, the most important figure has been Johnny Carson. The, the man uh, has been encouraging and helpful to me in ways that he doesn't know I know about. He has, in, in my career, done things uh, not for any uh, open gratitude or any favors returned. He has been so helpful to me and such a role model for me that I, I will never uh, be able to repay the kindness uh, to the man. Yeah, Dave, are you going to kick Jay Leno's ass, and what do you think will happen to Arsenio in the upcoming late night battle? I'm going to kick your ass. That's what I'm going to do, buddy. <laughs> me and Larry, down there, all over you. Like a cheap suit, pal. You're dead meat, right, Larry? Take it. You, you loosen him up, I'll finish him off. Uh, you know, that's it's silly to say things like that. Don't, man, I, you probably feel silly now. Uh, no, we're, I mean, the, the, the only kind of strategy we've ever used is we worry about ourselves. We worry about our show. We concentrate on doing the best show uh, we can possibly do. And... Uh, you know, we, all of that other stuff seems to take care of itself. I, I, I know that it's going to be difficult. I know we have some obstacles. Uh, I think our goal, I think everybody up here just it, it wants us to be competitive. So I, I, would not, I would not say we're in business right now to kick anybody's ass. How do you feel about guests coming on your show for the next few months and bringing up your deal and your motive? Um, I, I, th I think that we'll grow weary of that uh, pretty soon. I think you folks have grown tired of it already. Uh, so I don't, I don't see that as a problem. Paul? Did he come along with the deal? Oh, shit, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what you, have you got a little extra for Paul? Or? <laughs> Absolutely. Paul Schaefer, I've said this before, Paul Schaefer and the band Night In and Night Out is the best thing about our television program. And uh, I would not have considered any change unless Paul uh, was eager and, and happy and, and uh, willing to go with us. Okay. That's about it, eh? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Nice chatting with you. Do what you can. Do what you can. We're going to take you back up and do something. We're just going to get a shot again. We're just going to get a shot again. We're just going to get a shot again. We want you. I will fight. I will fight. Right here, please.
for CBS and that's the feeling here among CBS employees. Uh, late night has been a big problem for CBS and this could be the solution. Um, I think the biggest question remains, will Letterman stay in New York or go to LA? My sources tell me, and they're pretty high level sources within the show, that it is really a 50-50 call. Letterman, even though he is a New Yorker in sensibility and lives nearby, uh, happens to like Los Angeles, and so it's a real question. There are other members of his uh, advisory team that also like Los Angeles. It's very much up in the air right now where he will stay or where he'll go. I think the show will start for the first uh, year in New York, and then we'll see. What was it like uh, on the show tonight? Well, one thing that you know, I think people would find amusing about the show tonight is when Roger Ebert and I come out, you'll see Letterman come over and whisper something in my ear as I come out, and he says, they don't care at all, meaning the audience really doesn't care uh, whether he stays with NBC or CBS. And, you know, I really don't think they do care. I think they're interested in him, not on the channel that he's on. What did he say to you personally? Um, that was what he said, uh, that was what he said personally. Um, an advanced peek at the top ten reasons why he's leaving NBC, which he announces on the show later tonight. Number one reason, CBS insists I wear pants. Not me, him. But I mean, anything um, off camera in, in his ear or your ear? Well, that's what I just said before. Okay, okay? so that was... That, that was the number one, that the audience, he says that they don't really care. And I think he's right, that ultimately they don't care. When he announced it on the show that he was uh, going uh, to CBS, there was no big audience uh, applause or excitement. They don't care, they love him, they don't love a network. Okay, thanks. All right, so that's done.